It is time to talk family health now, and today it's all about your toddler's ability to start incorporating language into their communication skills. Dr. Lynn Kenny is the author of The Family Coach Method, and she joins us now to answer your questions. Welcome, Dr. Lynn. Nice oh, to see you. happy to be here. All right, let's jump right into it. We're going to get one of our questions from one of our smart family viewers, and this is Amanda. Listen in. Hi, Dr. Lynn. This is Amanda from Wisconsin and Cole. He's 14 months old, and I'm wondering how he can, how I can teach him to develop his language skills. Oh, that's a good one. So the, where do we even start with Well, this? at 14 months old, he's already got a lot of language. You know, he's already, he started blowing his raspberries when he was about seven to nine months old, and then he started to make his vowel sounds, and now he's probably putting together some consonant, um, you know, consonant sounds, and probably getting some words by, you know, 12 to 14 months old. It, it, it's amazing how language, the kids are primed to speak and understand language. Yeah, and we don't even have to understand what they're saying. Was I'm watching, I was watching the YouTube video that's been circling the, gro the globe, and it's so funny to look at even those two just having a great time, and clearly they know what the other person's saying, but we have no clue. They're having a full-on conversation. <laughs> it's pretty fun. Okay, so how do we introduce language to our toddlers? What are some steps there? Well, some important things are, you know, you can begin simply by naming objects. You know, your children are, they're crawling around on their hands and knees, you know, six to nine months, and they're interested in things and you can just point things out oh yes chair oh ball show them hand them to them that's at the multi-sensory experience mm -hmm. that's a really nice thing you can do some visual cueing so visual cueing is when when they look at something you comment on what it is all right or you or you help them look like oh plant and you'll see them there's, there's something called your mirror neurons mm -hmm. which actually move your motor cortex in order to imitate the sound that you see the other person speaking. I mean, yeah. how cool is that? Yeah, kids so, are like little mirrors or little sponges to whatever you're putting off. Yeah, so if I'm a baby, I'm watching your mouth and I'm trying to move my mouth like you are as we're doing the language and that's why number three, we really want to talk face to face. Mm -hmm, that one-on-one that -on -one communication. Right. Okay, now another thing that you know, I think we've seen a lot of studies about really are that singing songs, reading poems, uh, reading stories to your children. Those are huge, huge beginning uh, uh, activities activities that really set children up for a lifetime. Yeah, you know, everyone says read to your child, read to your child, read to your child. It's so important because those early rhyming patterns actually set the stage for reading. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, singing the songs that where there are rhymes, reading the books like Dr. Seuss out loud, letting the children turn the pages and anticipate what's next. If they try to imitate a word, don't correct them. Mm -hmm. Just let them move along because those are very important pre-reading skills. When you're talking about early communication, you also see the video of uh, people who are teaching their babies sign language before they can actually form the words. They're doing it visually. Yeah, it's lovely. I was just um, on vacation and a little child who I didn't even know started signing to me. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, that's right. You'd like more to drink? I only know 10 signs. But the child was like, oh my golly, I don't know her. And she knows this. Yeah. Signing is very important. It does not interfere with your language development. The thing is that it decreases your frustration when you're a little little child who doesn't have language yet because at least you can say what it is you need. Yeah, you, they're understanding you. Mm -hmm. Let's talk about that for a second because the child's developmental skills, kind of by, the, by about 18 months old, they really should be hitting some big keys. And if they're not and there might be a problem, what do we need to know and what are some of those signs that there could be an issue in their, in their, their ability to understand language? All right, well, if they're having a little bit of difficulty understanding single step commands, you know, if you say, pick that up, Johnny or if you point to a, a, a dolly and you say oh show me the foot they mm -hmm. should be able to do those sorts of things they should also be able to do some sound like they've got to be able to reproduce um, sounds beyond vowels mm -hmm. they understand simple directions and then if they're only speaking the vowels like that you you hear the children specifically God bless them the ones with autism they'll go ee, ee, high tones you don't want that you want them to be saying bubba da da um, little um, kind of vowel consonant combinations and you should just go to a speech pathologist you can go see your pediatrician if you want but it's the speech pathologist where I send the kids beginning at 18 months all right dr. Lynn thanks so much for My being joy. with us we appreciate it